here to help, but we are getting set up for our pigs. Oh, the lighting's horrible. Ta-da! Uh, we've got uh, about one week to till they're ready to be picked up, and we're gonna have them out here to start because they're young. They're only gonna be about now 10 weeks old at most. And we'll keep them in this little barn, so we're getting the fence set up. Boy, it is, it is really wet out here still and soft. It's kind of unusual. Well, not unusual, it's uh, not what I expected. That's better phrasing. But we got these fences put up, so we're gonna have the pigs in here to start. And we're gonna go ahead and electrify this fence, that way Josie and Calf can uh, work together. <laughs> and uh, learning not to go in here. This will be the pigs only area for now. Um, we're probably gonna have a semi-permanent pig spot for our boar and probably for another uh, one of our breeder hogs or a feeder hog excuse me that way it's not lonely but they can kind of be together grow up together and then we'll have the rest of them out moving around on pasture so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get this guy I think electrified and set up and going done here we're uh, getting the uh, angle of that thing the uh, solar panel adjusted and then we're gonna put two stakes up on the fence to help hold it because it's the uh, single um, spike all flock or poultry fencing oh man there's a couple breaks in it too just a few Those look like they might have might have just broke down yes. here. Remember the pigs chewed on our fence? I remember that, but that was not this fence. Okay, so see what I'm doing here, bub? Put the camera down here. Inside. Yep. So I'm holding this one straight up and down. I'm gonna get this stake. And it's gonna be like at this kind of an angle, but not really, really deep angle. So I'm gonna go kind of like this. See how it's not straight up and down. This one's kind of going this back way. Yeah. I'll push it in. And then you. And leave it. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Pretty good. All right. I did. Andrew, why don't you go turn it on? <clears throat> Get off the fence, everybody. <clears throat> and make Actually, sure. We should make sure. Everything's off. That the fence. there's not birds in the fence. So don't turn it on. Chickens or anything hiding? No? Looks 
good. Can't see. It's so dark in there. It's so bright out here. Okay. There we go. Looks good. This is going to be our temporary pig housing. Um, I, I think permanently we're going to end up having the ducks in here or the ducks at least in half of this. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. It's just kind of a, and you can see these are like actual wood beams. That's my wife calling. Hey babe. Uh, so yeah, it was Brittany calling. She's in the house, just needed troubleshooting on something. Uh, but we're going to, you know, it almost looks like, almost looks like they might have had a door on one side or the other of here before, the way it's framed off. It's just kind of weird the way the framing is here, and it stops at the post. And then you've got the framing starts again on the other side of the post and goes across. Whereas on the other side, you can see the post right there, the framing goes all the way across and the it connects behind it. It's just kind of odd. Interesting. I don't know what they used this for before. I think it was birds of some kind because we find there's quite a few like uh, chicken wings and bones and bits and pieces and stuff. So I'm fairly certain that's what was in here. But this will work really well for the pigs. Um, I'm going to have to get a little ramp built here or build up the dirt. I'm not sure which because uh, they won't be able to get in and out uh, over that step until they're bigger. And even then, it'd be kind of awkward. And I'm not sure they'd enjoy that. So all that to say, we're going to get this fence electrified and tested. All right. Sorry, boys. I was videoing. spot for it. I always do it on the door handle right there just gently. Alright, let's get the fence turned on. I know I'm inside it, but we'll have you test the outside fence and then I'll have to test the inside fence because you won't be able to reach it. Park much? Ugh. Is it on? Yep. Yeah, it's hitting good. All right, turn it off. So I can get out, please. <laughs> All right, here we go. Turn it back on. Boom! Good job, guys. Turn it on. That was a good job. Job well done. High five. Boom! Wait, you have blood or something? It does look like I have blood on my hand. Did you just Andrew, can you grab this? Yeah. Take it in. All right. Over Got our second, oh, feeder caught, second pig fence here. Um, for the pigs out in that we're going to be moving around, I think I'm going to need two or three fences for them. So eventually we'll be ending up getting two more of these pig fences, but for the time being, we'll probably just use our two all flock fences with it. Um, 
just because I'm going to want to set up a pen and then have the next pen set pre-set up for them so that when we go on moving day to move them it's really simple really easy you move them and then you pick up the old fence and you put it ahead um, and you're not fighting the pigs ever <laughs> so let me get this put up here real quick out of the way making sure that duckling wasn't getting crushed Probably. So, one of the things we wanted to talk about today, uh, kind of as a focus of today's video, aside from moving stuff. So, one of the things we're doing is moving towards being self-sufficient with meat, if possible, or if we had to. And part of the way that we're doing that is we got our ducks. So you can see here, there are little dark uh, birds in here along with the uh, chicks that uh, you guys have already seen. The dark colored, the really dark colored are the Cayuga ducks. Uh, we got, I think 10, let us see, 10, 11, 12 of those. And uh, we got 15 of the Khaki Campbells. They are all females except for two of the Cayuga ducks. Unfortunately, they both died along with two other Cayugas and one of the Khaki Campbells. So we'll be reaching out to the hatchery. It's the same hatchery we got our chicks from, so I'm not 100% sure why those birds died. Uh, we've never had an issue keeping the chicks and the ducks together. We've never had an issue with any of our ducklings dying. I, th I think we had one that was dead when we got our very first round of ducks. I think we ordered six and got four that were live in with the order. And those were actually packaged in with the chicks that we ordered. So that was, you know, a couple of years ago. But uh, we got all these birds. We got plenty of heat lamps to keep them warm. Uh, this is actually a heating plate down here that uh, we bought from Tractor Supply. The chicks seem to love it, along with the ducks. So our goal is that these birds will end up being egg layers, uh, other than the Cornish cross. The Cornish cross are going to be meat for us to put in our freezer. The pigs are going to be meat for us to put in our freezer. We're getting a breeding pair of pigs so that at least once a year, starting next year, we can have our own litter of pigs. I don't have to go and spend you know sixty dollars, a hundred dollars to get. Uh, a piglet in my area they're just they vary in price but you know, they're not inexpensive just to start but we are getting our own ability to have our own piglets we're gonna let the ducks eggs be fertile we're gonna keep males in with them the mallards and we're or in the drakes and we're going to raise ducklings ourselves from our own birds these are both a dual purpose birds so you can not only raise them for egg layers but you can eat the meat um, when the ducks get older and after two years or so, uh, we can cull the, some of the older ones and we can actually turn those into meat for our freezer as well. Um, same with the egg laying chickens. Uh, ideally, we're going to be getting uh, a rooster again. Sorry, hey, hey, RIP. And we're gonna try and have some, some sustainability as far as that's concerned, um, being able to hatch our own eggs. Along with these other birds, uh, you can see here, this is our new egg incubator that we got. Uh, this is what we're gonna use. We've got, these are turkey eggs in here right now. We're hopefully going to hatch our own turkey poults so that we don't have to spend almost $20 per chick, per poult, uh, baby turkey is called a poult, and instead can raise our own and incorporate those into our birds and our current flocks and we can start butchering turkeys and you know keep the cycle going uh, these are all ways that we're gonna try and save money as we're getting more meat birds uh, we're gonna be obviously eating all the eggs and enjoying those as well especially duck eggs when they start hatching or start uh, uh, laying eggs can't tell you how excited I am about that but yeah we're we're working as hard as we can to make sure that we have got some self-sustainability and we're gonna incorporate 
a garden, and then we've got a greenhouse that I'm going to be setting up. It's a small, very small hoop house. It's uh, only 20 feet long. It's, uh, I think, seven or eight feet wide, seven feet tall. Not a huge one, but it's a great start for us because we're going to be able to have vegetables that we're growing, whether it's lettuce and other cold hardies, broccoli, maybe some Brussels sprouts or asparagus, things like that. that we can grow late into fall and winter and hopefully, pending it's not brutally cold, we can even get those during the winter, be growing lettuce, be growing spinach, kale, all these things that we can have fresh in our own, our own garden. Um, and we're so excited about that. Uh, the, the self-sustainability, I know I've said that, it's like a catchphrase. I've said it like 18 times here already. But there's no better feeling than knowing that when a big snowstorm hits and everybody's rushing to whatever grocery store buying all the bread and all the eggs and all the milk and all you know those things you know i can live without bread if i have to but i've got my own milk here i've got my own eggs here i if i have to come out and butcher a bird so my family can eat that day because we're snowed in or something i we can do that if, if, this is giving us the freedom to not be chained down to being reliant on a grocery store. And that's important to me. And maybe that's important to you. Maybe that's something you're striving to get. And let me just encourage you, if you're worried or nervous about starting like with some like egg laying hens or something like that, that's exactly how we started out. We lived in a neighborhood. We had a little mini shed. It was, you know, less probably than half the size of Josie's stall here. And we used that. We cut a little door into it. We blocked out like the back quarter of it. And we raised, I think we had 12 or 15 laying hens. And we raised them and then we started getting fresh eggs. And it was amazing. It was one of the greatest things to be able to get fresh eggs and living in a neighborhood. And we never had to go buy eggs at a store. And if I needed to, if there was a massive snowstorm or whatever the future may hold, the apocalypse comes, whatever, I would be able to have all this food for my family. Now I know it's facetious with the apocalypse and whatnot, but I I enjoy the self sustainability. Not because I'm worried necessarily that something bad's gonna happen and I'm not gonna be able to get food. It's just because I want to be self sufficient. I don't want to rely on other people. I want to be able to do this myself and then I want to in turn be able to help my friends and my family and make sure that they're getting what they need as well. So that's it for me. I've rambled. Brooder's done. You guys saw that last week, that video about getting the brooder out. Uh, that thing was just, it kept dropping to the bottom of my importance list. And so it took forever. I think it took me over three weeks before I got it actually finished. So I'm gonna get the tractor moved into the garage here, or the barn, and I'm gonna go run an errand and then I think I'm gonna go mow my front yard because I want to <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later I appreciate you watching this video um, feel free to like and subscribe and share it um, that's all we ask ha have a great day